Good morning. morning. Great, great to uh, be with you and have the privilege of opening the scriptures again. We are in a series right now on the Holy Spirit. And we are teaching, and I am very mindful there are some of you, you've been on the road for a long time, walking with the, the Spirit, and, and you know so much of what we're sharing, but we're also very mindful of people coming among us, uh, new among us, or new to the faith, and really to, to get a good grounding on the things of the Spirit is so important and so critical. We're on week three today. And uh, the first week, we had an introduction to the Holy Spirit. Who is Holy Spirit? And last week, we looked at being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you missed those messages, you can catch up on our YouTube channel or by the podcast section of the website. Today, we are going to be looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm super excited to be bringing this message Today, how this Holy Spirit wants to work through you, revealing things to you for others, letting His power be revealed and released in the world around us through us and through our lives. This is God's plan, it is God's intention, it is one of the key ways that the kingdom comes in the earth, a supernatural dimension to our lives. And when I use that word supernatural, I remember when I was first a Christian, I heard the word supernatural sounded a bit weird. We are talking about the things that are beyond what we can naturally do, the the normal affairs of life. The Holy Spirit can change me and help me to be more kind and more patient, and He is working in me, but I can exercise kindness as a human being. But I cannot lay hands on the sick and see them healed in and of myself. And we are talking about that which is beyond the natural that the Holy Spirit wants to put in us and through us. Before I dive in though, I want to signpost to next week's message where Esther will be looking at life in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and really how the Holy Spirit not only wants to work through us, but is working in us to change us, to make us more like Jesus. And this is so important. And really, these two messages have to go hand in hand. This is why uh, Paul, in writing to the church at Corinth, we're going to turn there in a moment. He unpacks the gifts of the Spirit, where we're going to be today. How God wants to move through you in supernatural ways. And then the next chapter, chapter 13, which is often read at weddings, it is, it is really him talking about how we are to administer the gifts of the Spirit. And he talks about love and the importance of love. In fact, he says, if I speak in tongues... The tongues of men and angels, but don't have love. I am like a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy that we're going to look at today and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith to move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And really, we, we have to allow the Spirit to change us, to make us more like Him, that our lives would point to Him, that our lives would be a witness. If we are moving in the gifts of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is not evident, we will cause carnage and create a very strange sound to people that are looking on and thinking, really, this person just shared something from God for me, but look at how they are living. I'm not, is this God? Is this what it means to be a Christian? And so really these things have to go hand in hand. Can the people of God say amen? Awesome. Why don't we turn to 1 Corinthians 12? We are going to read the opening 11 verses. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. It's a church that is relatively new in faith. There are signs of dysfunctionality and there are issues that he's addressing. But they're also a church that are hungry to move in the power of God. They're clearly excited about this this supernatural dimension. And so he's bringing some instruction And this is what he says. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. He's writing to the whole church. This is a message for all of us today. I do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by dumb idols. Therefore, I do, uh, I want you, sorry, to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. 
To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. To still another, the interpretation of tongues. These are all the work of one and the same Spirit. And He distributes them to each one just as He determines. You'll have heard me say many times now how uh, my family was ambushed by Jesus. I was 16, 17, and um, Jesus came into our family, and we all ended up getting saved. And my introduction to the Christian faith was one of a supernatural God who wants to work in us and through us. The transformation of our family began when my mom went to a service and a man of God called Ken McGreevy was speaking about how God had been working in and through their ministry, including things like words of knowledge of how God had spoken to him to go to a, a very specific address that he didn't know and him turning up and knocking the door and the person, the, the, the owner of the house opening the door and saying yes and him going, I, I don't know why I'm here, but I feel God has sent me and the person breaking down in tears because they've been about to take their own life and they cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. And this man of God had turned up. This idea that God can speak and move. I remember going to a service early on where demons were being cast out and, and someone who had one leg shorter than the other, their, their leg grew. Now, I didn't see the leg grow, but I heard the lady testify. I've had chronic back pain for many years. My one leg was shorter than the other and my leg has grown. So I was introduced to Christianity with this idea that God wants to move and God wants to work. And I thank God that He is still alive and He's still moving today. And He wants to move through you. He wants to work through us. This is His great desire. Just before we dive into these gifts and this text, I want us to understand a little bit contextually about the gifts within the New Testament. Because actually there are three different groupings that I think are best understood distinctly from one another of gifts, the idea of gifts within the New Testament. You can go online and you can do some spiritual gift tests that bundle them all together, but I don't think it's particularly helpful. So three different groupings really quickly. Firstly, there are the ministry gifts of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, this is what the Bible says, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave. So there's this idea that Jesus has given some things to the church. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now these ministry gifts, the five-fold ministry gifts, Ephesians 4, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, are graces and gifts. They are offices and roles that are bestowed upon certain individuals, but they are not for all. We would understand that Pastor Dominic Yo, who, who is a mentor to myself and Esther, is an apostle. He doesn't go around calling himself Apostle Dom, but he is by, by the evidence of his fruit and his work of planting churches, of breakthrough in ministry, of overseeing leaders of leaders, of carrying multiple global facilities, of breaking through on multiple fronts. There is the evidence of an apostolic grace upon his life, but not all are apostles. We believe Dr. John Andrews is an Ephesians 4 teacher, a ministry gift, a gift from Christ to his church. Not all of us can teach like Dr. John. He, he can understand the deep things of theology and make them accessible. I also know, because I know him well, he could teach 10 sessions today and do 10 sessions tomorrow and do 10 sessions the next day and, and it wouldn't be any issue for him. Because there's a grace on his life to teach and build up the body of Christ. Now, not all are ministry gifts. And actually, those that are, they are not to be served. Their position is to equip God's people, the rest of us, for works of service. To build the body up. So that's the ministry gifts of Christ. Different from what we're looking at today. Then there are what I would call the body gifts. Because there's this idea which is brought many times in Scripture of the church is like a body. One might be an ear, one might be an eye, one might be a hand, might be a foot. That we have different gifts, that we have different skills, that we have different graces. 
And for instance, in Romans uh, chapter 12, Paul says this, For by the grace given me, I say to each one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. So we belong to one another. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. I don't believe this is an exhaustive list. Now, the prophecy is in there, and we're going to look at that. But the general thrust of Romans 12, Paul is saying we have different graces, so function in your grace to serve the rest. Thank God for Joshua who's playing keyboard today. He has a gift. But here's the thing. Although the Holy Spirit can come and anoint our natural and experiential giftings, there is a sense of permanence to these gifts. If I have a grace to serve, I'm not waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon me in power in order to serve. I can just get on and serve. That uh, That doesn't let the rest of us off the hook from serving. In the same way someone might have a grace to lead, then they should bring that into play for the good of the church. You might have a a particular grace to make money for the kingdom of God and a heart of generosity to want to give. It might be a particular grace on your life. Not that the rest of us shouldn't be faithful in giving and generosity, but we recognize we work together. This is the body of Christ working together. But there is this sense of permanence rather than occasional usage of these gifts. And then we get to what we're looking at today, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the difference here is these are occasional rather than permanent. And what I mean by that is I can have a word of knowledge in a moment as revealed by the Holy Spirit, but it is occasional in the sense that the Holy Spirit might reveal something to me in a moment. But it's not something that I can just deploy at will. Does this make sense? And so these are the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to work through you and bring through you things that you couldn't otherwise do. And the more available you are, I think the more He will use you. So let's look at this text briefly. Uh, We're going to turn to the gifts, but I'd like us to understand a few things from these scriptures. Firstly, we've just read this, 1 Corinthians 12. It says, Now to each one, verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And verse 11, these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. I'd like to notice, firstly, that these gifts are for all. Can we say for all? He says to each one. He begins by writing. He says, brothers and sisters, he's writing to the whole church. I want you all to know that these gifts are for all. Or to each one, he is speaking to everybody. I want to encourage us not to fall into the trap of thinking these are things that people do on a platform. Actually, the Holy Spirit wants to work through you in your workplace. He wants to to work through you in, in the marketplace, when you're at the supermarket. You might be in a checkout. Well, pray for the person who's serving you because God might show you something for them. You might have a prophetic word. This is where the gifts are for all of us to function in. I remember uh, as a, a new Christian arriving, a, a fairly new Christian arriving at university in my first year, uh, and, and this, this other first year student called Yasmin being brought to me, because people understood I was from a Pentecostal church, and I believe in the power of God. And this girl, Yasmin, she had a, a major issue with her legs so that they couldn't diagnose, she couldn't run, she was in agony. And uh, someone had said, oh, I, I heard that God can heal. And, the, and, the, and they said, oh, you need to talk to Martin. Because I was kind of the Pentecostal nutcase. Uh, and I just, you know, at that point, I didn't know that sometimes people didn't get healed. And I was just like, yeah, God heals. Did you not know that? And so I said, look, we need to pray. And we gathered some people. And, and I remember this girl testifying that she felt like a burning heat pass through her body from the top of her head through to the tip of her toes. And she knew she'd been healed. The next day, she, she ran, which she had been unable to do for several months, to her physio appointment to cancel it. And she incorporated the university running track uh, one full lap before coming to say, I'm not going to need these appointments anymore because Jesus has healed me. I was 19. I hadn't read much of the Bible. My theology wasn't sorted out, and God was working on my character. I was not expert. I was one thing, available. 
I was one thing available. And, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that we're not open for God to work on our lives and our character, as I've said. But you might be the main candidate that's available in your office tomorrow. And so God wants to work through us all. Secondly, I want us to understand that, that this is a manifestation. Can we say manifestation? Of the Spirit. That These are such a powerful witness because it is evidence when the gifts of the Spirit operate that God is real and God is at work. When this girl got healed at university and she started telling her friends, well, whatever they thought there was evidence, there was a sign that maybe... Maybe this God was actually alive and real. It is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word is this beautiful word, phanerosis. Some of you that are medics will understand this is used as a medical term. It means when something was hidden, it becomes visible. It can also mean uh, a shining forth or a breaking out. That which is hidden becomes visible. It is a phanerosis of the Spirit, the Spirit that is within me. I can be in the queue at the supermarket and the person behind me doesn't know that God is within me until I bring a word of prophecy to them and then it is a phanerosis of the Spirit. The Spirit is manifest when I move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I remember that same year in my summer holiday working in a pork pie factory and there was a guy called John on my line and we, were, we would take pies off a line and we would just talk for hours and we were there just doing the same thing. And he quickly found out I was a Christian. We talked about Christianity and sometimes he seemed interested and sometimes he just mocked me. And I remember coming in early one morning and him saying, Martin, do you believe in healing? And some of you heard me tell this, this story. And I mean, it's 6 a.m., I'm in a boiler suit and a hairnet, there's no keyboard playing, and, uh, and, and he's saying, do you believe in healing? He said, you know, I said, you know I believe in healing. He said, well, heal my knee. So I said, well, John, what, what's happened to your knee? He said, I damaged it last night, I'm in a lot of pain, heal my knee. So I said, well, look, I, I, I can't heal your knee, but I do believe God could heal your knee. Now, when I'm beginning to say this, I'm also talking to God and saying, Lord, you better show up right now, or I'm going to look really <laughs> stupid, and... And I remember having this conversation, and he said, well, get God to heal my knee. So I said, look, I believe faith is important in, in healing. I said, John, do you believe that God can heal your knee? He said, yes. I said, look, don't believe you. I said, yesterday you told me you didn't believe God existed. Now you believe you can heal your knee. I said, but and again, I'm talking to God. I said, you better back me up here. I said, but I've got faith that God can heal your knee. I said, do you mind if we stop the line? So we stop the line. The pies stop coming down for a minute. And I said, do you mind if I put my hand on your knee? He gave me a very strange look that said, you've got this much latitude here. Um, and I knelt down in the pork pie factory at six o'clock in the morning and put my hand on his knee and started to pray. And something happened inside his knee. I remember he, he, he said some words that are not appropriate to share from the pulpit as he began to experience something of the Holy Spirit working inside his body. It was a phanerosis. It was a breaking or a shining forth that God wanted to reach into his life, into his world. Also, I want us to understand from this passage that these gifts are for the common good. These are to build one another up. It is, you know, when, when these things happen, they are an encouragement. That it is, it is a beautiful thing in the body of Christ. So often here at the end of our, our main worship run, we don't often stop the service and say, Thus saith the Lord. But we'll often say, just sense the Lord wants to do something here. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had felt God speak to me about people that are facing accusations in the workplace and, and tribunals. And I've had testimonies of people coming forward. I go, it's unbelievable what happened. Like I was, I mean, somebody came, they got a brother in another part of the country that had a major tribunal the next day and uh, was exonerated in a way that looked completely impossible. And it, and it encourages the body of Christ. It is for others. It's not for us to look good. It is for the body to be built up. And they're distributed by the Spirit. It means it is the Holy Spirit who gives them. But I want us to understand this, that the Holy Spirit doesn't give one gift to one person, but, but no other gifts. Or an, and one gift to another. It's not like, well, Kutzai has got the gift of prophesy, so, prophecy, so you know, he can bring forth the Word of God to anybody at any time, but he could never uh, lay hands on someone and get them healed. Because AJ's got that gift. And if you want healing, you better come to AJ. But if you need a word of prophecy, I wouldn't go to AJ. This, this isn't how the Holy Spirit works. Uh, Peter, uh, when, when that beautiful 
uh, sermon at, at the day of Pentecost, and he stands up, and, and uh, those that are gathered, they say, what must we do to be saved? They repent and be baptized, uh, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is for each of you, for everyone whom God will call, for all those who are far off. That means us. The gift is the Holy Spirit. This week in our life groups, we'll look at the story from Acts 9 of Ananias, a regular disciple that you only see one time. He just crops up, but he's a guy that God speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks to him. And he moves in multiple gifts of the Spirit on that one afternoon as God uses him. As the Holy Spirit allows him and enables him to function in different ways. It's best for us to understand that the gift is the Holy Spirit and he wants to move through us in any ways. I do believe there can be anointings and special graces and people can have a particular grace on their life in an area. But I, I do not believe that God uh, doesn't want to work all gifts in all people if we are Available, but it is Him that gives those gifts. So, what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Well, there are nine of them that we have just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to break them down for us into three groups. This, this isn't Bible, and uh, so remember this is the whole nine, but just to help us a little bit. Firstly, there are three what you might call gifts of revelation. Gifts of revelation, first of which is the word or the message of wisdom. This is to say that the Holy Spirit can give you wisdom that you could not have reached in and of yourself. Does anybody ever need wisdom? Yeah. Like, I mean, well, you know, what, one of my consistent prayers, oh God, give me wisdom. Oh Lord, we need your wisdom. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. So this is why I do it. Uh, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And the Holy Spirit can impart wisdom to you. We've got some amazing stories in our family. When our kids were growing up, going, Lord, how do we deal with this situation? And having a thought that I don't think we would have thought. It's like a thought, only we didn't think it. And you go, oh, Holy Spirit, that's good. And bring something into play. I remember here we were, we'd advertised for... Uh, a post, a, a staff role within our finance team, a very important job, and we'd crafted the job spec, and we'd put it out there, we'd banded the salary, we'd done all of that work, and we advertised it, and nobody with the appropriate skill set came forward, and so we let it run, and, and then we put it back out another time, and, and, and again, nobody came forward, so we extended the deadline, and nobody came forward, and we're at the end of it, we're going, okay, what are we going to do? We, we need to fulfill this post. Uh, how much wider should we advertise? Should we reshape the role? Should we make it like two part time? Like, you know, what, what do you do? Oh, God, we need some wisdom. That day, I was reading in my devotions in Luke chapter 13, and I read the parable of the man who had a fig tree that had borne no fruit. And, and he goes to the man who takes care of the vineyard, the owner of the vineyard does, and says, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any, cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, dig around it, fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. And when I read it, my spirit leapt. And I, I had this sense that God was trying to say something to me. Well, I say God was trying. God was saying something to me. I was trying to understand what he was saying to me. God's not ever struggling to communicate it, it's the hearing apparatus that can be uh, more of the issue. But I had this sense that God was speaking to me. And so I, uh, so I, I was like, Lord, what? And, I, and, and I thought about this role. And, I, and, and as I did, I sensed the presence of God. And I thought, oh, Lord, you're speaking to me about this role. And, and I looked at this scripture. I thought, well, well, three times we've attempted to get fruit from this. And it's been fruitless. But, but the man said, give it one more year. Dig it. Fertilize it. And so I, I went back and, and I, I shared with a couple of other of, of the leaders, one of whom had read the same passage and had come to the same conviction on the same day. And we said, okay, well, what does it mean to dig it and fertilize? So we put it on social media, and we, but we put the same job out a fourth time. And this time, Shio, who, who is in role and has been a fantastic addition to team, came forward, applied, and we fulfilled the post. I believe it was a word of wisdom. I didn't know what to do, but the Holy Spirit showed me what to do, and it bore fruit. That's a word of wisdom. Uh, next is a word or message of knowledge. This sometimes goes hand in hand with prophecy or healing. But identify some information that you couldn't otherwise have known. 
One of the most remarkable words of knowledge that, that I witnessed, my friend Paul Bedoado, a Ghanaian who was a prayer partner with me, uh, we were ministering in, in Nottingham, our previous church. And one morning at the end of the service, he came to me. He said, man, he said, this has been odd. He said, I, I thought God speak to me that, about healing someone with depression, but, but I just didn't, I thought it was for this morning, but it just didn't feel right. I said, are you, are you there tonight? We had an evening service. He said, yeah, I'm there tonight. I said, look, I'm preaching tonight. I said, I'll, I'll catch your eye, and if you feel you should bring it, then, then just bring it. And that night, we had an incredible service. It was like an open heaven. People were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Demons were being cast out. People got saved. I mean, it was just, there was, the Lord opened the heavens. I remember at the end of the service, I, I remembered Paul, and, I, and I, 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 I kind of found him, and I looked across, and he was nodding. And he came up, and he said this, there's somebody here, I believe God wants to set you free tonight from depression. And he said, you've got a journal. And it's pink on the cover. And on the front, it's got a big M. And on, on the final bit, the tail swirls round several times. And he said, in your room, in your bedroom, you've got a dressing table with three panel mirrors. And on the right-hand mirror, there are some photos. And sometimes when you look at those photos, that triggers some of your darkest thoughts. And this girl who was in church for the very first time came down the front. The place erupted. And someone, one of my friends had sat near her, and when he described the M, she'd gasped because it was her journal. She had it with her in her bag. It was a word of knowledge. I remember saying to Paul, like, how did you get that much specific information? And he said, well, I was praying on Friday, and I, and I felt the Lord speak to me about setting somebody free. And I said, Lord, you need to give me more than that. And I waited on the Lord, and as I waited, I saw the journal in my spirit. It's like in my mind's eye. You, if you come to understand how to, how to hear the voice of the Spirit... And I said, Lord, that's not enough. And I waited more, and then I, I, I saw the bedroom, and I had the sense of the presence of God, a conviction. And I've carried it with me. It's not gone. In fact, it's kind of crystallized. So he shed it. A word of knowledge. So this girl who was in church for the first time, she knew that God wanted to do something in her life. If he'd have said that some, anybody, here, anybody here ever feel depressed, she might have just looked around, but she knew God was coming after her because of a word of knowledge, and God did an amazing thing in her life. The next gift of revelation is the distinguishing between spirits or discernment. And what can happen in our spirit, you can, you can discern a particular spirit that somebody has. There may be a, a demonic situation, something territorially. I was in this training environment, people were being filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues. And there was, there was this one lady who... Um, I, I went over towards her, and she was speaking in another language. To the natural ear, it was just another language. It was as if she was speaking in tongues, but something in my spirit was wrong. Like It was like opposed magnetic forces. I was like, oh, there was something. I just, I, the Spirit of God in me was repelling against what was happening there. And, and, I, and I didn't understand what it was. There was another leader with me. I said, would you just go and... and Listen to that lady as she's speaking. And, she, and this, this lady I was working with, like, she had the same experience. We said, something's not quite right. And we just gently, uh, she like, sat down with this lady and just said, you know, hey, what's going on here? And started to unpack, said, you know, is, is this, have you spoken in this language before? She said, yeah, I've spoken in this language for years. Like when I was involved with the occult and Ouija boards. And it turned out it was demonic tongues. And we had to help her understand this is not what God wanted to do. And she needed to submit to the Lordship of Christ. How did we know that? Because actually it wasn't the natural ear, it was the spiritual ear. It was discernment. You might discern some things. And it's not that we don't then love people or come towards people to help people, but we can discern there's something not right here. The, three, the, the, the second group that we might want to look at is what you might call gifts of power. Faith. Miracles and healing. Faith. We all need faith. Hello? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're here and you're a believer, you have a dimension of faith. We all operate in dimension of faith. But I believe there is a gift of faith, an impartation of faith. There have been moments in my life where I have had a release of faith that has come from without side of me. And I, I mean, I remember when we first moved here, and you've heard us tell the story. I'd met with a bank manager. I was told that they might want to repossess the building, and we might lose the building. Uh, we, we weren't financially strong enough to secure a mortgage. And it, was, it would have been a bit of a disaster coming on the church. I remember feeling a bit anxious about that. 
And uh, I had several days where I'd, I'd go to bed, and after a cycle of sleep, I'd wake up with a bit of a jolt. But then I remember on, on one morning, I was in prayer, and I had this massive release of faith where I just knew in my spirit everything was going to be all right. I, I did. And from that moment on, I never had one anxious thought about it. Nothing had changed circumstantially. It wasn't a word of prophecy. Often God will speak and give you a word which releases faith. I just had a surge of faith that God was with us and it was all going to be all right. I think there can be an impartation of faith at different times. The Bible talks about miracles, miraculous powers. I think this is where God overrides, the Spirit of God overrides through your hands the laws of nature. I remember hearing this most beautiful story. It was a, it was a video some years ago of, of a, a missions team that had been working in the Philippines, in Manila, uh, serving a group of people who were living off one of the massive uh, Manila rubbish dumps. And, and they decided to prepare Christmas dinner on Christmas Day for this community of about 50, 60 people. But word had got out and 500 people turned up. But this lady with this just beautiful smile on her face, she said, my job was to carve the ham. We had this ham. And she said, we saw the hundreds of people coming. And, and I just carved and I carved. And, and he said, it didn't go down. And I carved and I just kept carving all day until the queue came to the end. And then the ham started to run down. It was just incredible. And I remember the sense of the Holy Spirit on the video, on the testimony, where you just knew God had done a miracle. It wasn't the feeding of the 5,000, but it was the feeding of the 500. A modern day miracle, miraculous power. Uh, also, healing or the gifts of healings are available through us. I'm, I'm so encouraged, just the, literally this week, we've had three testimonies of healing. One of our life group leaders who, who has prayed for uh, a, late, a colleague of hers, who I, I don't believe is a Christian, who's had chronic back pain, spinal issues with a prognosis that, uh, that it would get worse and worse and she wouldn't be able to work. And, and, and this life group leader had offered to pray for her. She'd prayed for her and then got a testimony back that the pain had almost completely gone, uh, that, that it's just been this massive transformation. That this is as what she had sent on a text to, to her friend, part of the church here. The effect from last week, this is the unbeliever, is literally a miracle. Thank you. And where were you all those years ago? <laughs> a phanerosis of the Holy Spirit. We, we've heard this week, uh, a guy, I think it was two weeks ago, was in our service, came to prayer ministry team, about to go for surgery to remove a tumor from his liver. And the team prayed for him. And he'd really come for prayer because he was anxious, because he was aware of somebody else that had had the same surgery and has died during surgery. And the team prayed for him. And, and last week he went in for surgery and they went in and, and there was no tumor. And, and it, it had gone. They couldn't operate. And so, I, I mean, I, I, my understanding is that they'd actually opened him up. But there was nothing there. And they got like other medics and a radiologist in to look. But there was nothing. And so they've, they sewed him up, sent him home. There, is, there isn't a, there is no tumor. It, it, tumor, it's, it's a... It's the phanerosis of the Holy Spirit. Chris, who's here, just give us a, a wave. Chris, I've just had testimony. Okay, so this, this, if you've seen Chris, he's, uh, he's, he's brought his friend Thomas, who's, who's here from Alpha. So it's great to see Thomas and, and Chris. Uh, they've been on the Alpha course. And this week, uh, well, Chris had broken his arm a few weeks ago and had come. We, we were looking at, does God heal today? And, um, and, and his, his arm was, was, in a, was in a sling, was in a lot of pain. And he said like he could, couldn't lift his arm and couldn't, like, could barely just move his fingers like that. I mean, you've seen he's just put his hand up. And literally, and somebody actually was on my table, I'm not on Chris's table, had actually, um, she said, whoa, she said, I've, I've just seen his shoulder realign. She, she'd seen a movement as he was being prayed for. And, and then Chris kind of said, look, I, I, can, I can do this. I came into the room tonight and like, do we know to do this? I can now do this. Like, I could only do that. Now look at this. And uh, so, yeah, praise God. Um, healing. God might want to work through you. And uh, we come to the, 
Uh, the final group, gifts of utterance. Gifts of utterance, you might call it. A message in tongues, an interpretation in tongues, um, and also prophecy. Now, uh, a mess- Look, I believe that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Lord enables all of us to speak in tongues. And this is why Paul says, I would like all of you to speak in tongues. He said, I speak in tongues more than anybody else. He said, what should you do? Pray with your mind, pray with your spirit. Sing with your mind, sing with your spirit. And so I have no problem at all in a prayer meeting uh, if we are all praying in the Spirit together. Because I watch you, we're all lifting our voices, we can pray in our mother tongue, we can pray in the Spirit. In worship, we can sing in our mother tongue, we can sing in the Spirit. But what Paul is saying here is if you are, and, and, and again over into chapter 14, he said, if you're standing up and you're addressing people in tongues, then it requires an interpretation. And sometimes you might feel the, the provocation, actually, I think I need to bring a message in tongues. But you see, if I start speaking to you now, no, no, no one can say amen to that. I mean, you can by faith, but you don't really know what it was, right? But if, if I was to bring a message in tongues and someone interprets, it's not a translation, an interpretation, then actually it would be intelligible. And you might find in a meeting of that sense, that provocation, that nudge of the Holy Spirit, you need to bring a message in tongues. I'd, I'd encourage you, if that's the case, to, to come forward, speak to the meeting leader, uh, and just you know, allow us to orchestrate that wisely and, and well. But there might be a time, might be in your life group, want to bring a message in tongues. And then somebody will bring an interpretation. The Holy Spirit will give someone the ability to say, this is what is being said here. It might be God would, or it might be man would. I've seen all things. And then prophecy, which is God's word declared. Prophecy can be a gateway to the other gifts. Uh, prophecy is where we hear God speaking to, to us for somebody else. A prophetic word. It, it might be about their future, but it, it might just be about their life and their situation. And it's outside of the written word. Now, it might be that there's a verse that actually is highlighted and, and it's brought as a, as a now word, a rhema rather than a logos word. But it, it might be something that's outside of the realm of Scripture. But let's be clear, never contradictory to Scripture. No, not something that would contradict for us to do something that is against Scripture. Paul in 1 Corinthians 14 says, Now follow the way of love, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people, and get this, for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. And if you sense God speaking to you a prophetic word for somebody, check, is it strengthening, encouraging, and comforting? And if it isn't and it doesn't go away, then, then I recommend you come and speak to a leader to see, look, I'm sensing this. Should I bring it? Is this just for me to pray? How do I administrate this? But a good rule of thumb is that prophecy is for strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. But God may well want to speak to you about people that you meet, people in your life group, people at the supermarket checkout, as I've said. It's been amazing for me over uh, trying to move in the gifts of the Spirit over many years now. Sometimes how the Lord has spoken, not only a word that is relevant and right for an individual, but even in their, in, in their language. I'll give you an example. I remember sitting on the front row of a service one time about to preach, and a guy caught my eye that I'd never seen before. I did, when I say caught my eye, just in, my, in my spirit, I felt the Lord was drawing me to him. And, and I began to have this idea that he'd gone through some difficult things, uh, but they had strengthened him. And, I, and I, I had this picture, as I'm standing there, of, of metal. And, I, and the word tempering came, came to me. And I, just, and I sensed God was saying, uh, in the same way that, that metal can be, that steel can be tempered. Now, you've got to understand, I know nothing about metalwork at all. So I'm sensing this, but I have no idea whether this is even scientifically correct. But I had this sense that he'd been through this process that the Lord was describing like a tempering that was making him stronger and not brittle. And God was going to use the heat of the past process for his fruitfulness. And I got up to preach. And before I started, I said, hey, I, I know I don't know you. I feel God wants to, to say something to you. And I began, because I thought I, I didn't know if this was even correct scientifically. I began by saying, now you've got to understand, I'm not a metallurgist. And he said, I am. <laughs> and, and so I, I shared this, which by the grace of God was scientifically accurate of, of how things work. And, 
and he had been through some really tough things in his life. Years later, I had forgotten about this. He, we bumped into each other. He said, do you remember that word? Now, when he reminded me, I remembered it. And he said, look, this is what I'd gone through in my past. And I am now leading a project and a charity helping people who are going through that. And what you had said has come to pass. But here's the thing that it was not only an accurate word for his life. It was in his language. He's a metallurgist and God spoke to him using that that genre, that area of life. Isn't God amazing? And I want to tell you, listen, I, I, you just got to be available. Listen, time is gone. Why don't the band come and help me? But I want to just briefly take us through how to grow in the gifts of the Spirit. Number one, I want to say this. Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. If you go into the shops, say, Holy Spirit, we're going to the shops. Learn to actually have a relationship with the Spirit of God. Let him be involved in everything in your life. And if he is speaking to you about something, if he's challenging you, if you're feeling convicted, yield to him. And the more you obey, the more sensitive you will become. Secondly, I want to say this, eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. That's what Paul says. Another version of 1 Corinthians 14 says, set your heart on spiritual gifts. If you desire to move in the things of the Spirit, then pray about it. Ask him, oh Lord, I'd love to be involved in in, in healing. I'd, I'd love you to use me in this area. Eagerly desire. It is a noble thing to desire to move in the things of the Spirit. I want to say thirdly, for any here who have maybe moved in the gifts of the Spirit, but they've become somewhat dormant, fan into flame. Fan into flame the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister, mature person, well, for whatever reason, sometimes just the busyness of life, sometimes pain, Sometimes laziness, sometimes a lack of confidence. There can be different reasons, timidity, why we just begin to withdraw or stop stepping out and stop activating. Paul writes to Timothy. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mom, Eunice, and I'm persuaded lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Stir it up. Fourthly, function with respect and humility and love. I've already drawn us to 1 Corinthians 13. Remember, prophecy is for strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Now, if I sense God speaking to me and I'm bringing a word to someone, I'll, I'll always say, I, I, I sense God may be saying this. It's possible I've got it wrong. Submit it with humility, even if you're sure it's God. Because if it's God, it'll resonate. If it's God, it'll come to pass. But it's not helpful to come and say, God said. Because it, maybe you didn't. Maybe you thought God said. But to operate with respect for one another. If you see someone, you want to pray for them to be healed, go up and, and, and say, I'd love to pray for you. Would, would you be open to that? They might say, no, I don't want that. If you want to lay hands on someone, ask for their permission. If it's someone who's under 18, ask for the parental permission. We just operate in wisdom and God will do his work. The gifts are to build one another up. And lastly, can we stand together? Be bold. You never know what God might do. Can I say, church, be bold? Can we say together, be bold? Be bold. Be bold. You never know what God might do. God might want to work through you. And so often we, we can be there, we might sense something and, and we can feel nervous and we're not sure if it's right and so we, we don't step out. But, but maybe God was going to do something. I'll always remember before a, a, a service one time sensing that God wanted to heal somebody who had been who had, had got spinal issues through an accident. I just had this impression that, about a back and about an accident. And, and, and I'm like, look, I, you know, I don't know, is, is this right? But I remember stepping out in faith and just saying, I, I sense there's somebody here who, who has got spinal issues that was caused by a, and, and I think the phrase that had come to my spirit was a serious accident. I remember saying a serious accident. And I said, is, is there anyone here? And it was that moment where you kind of, oh gosh. But i never forget this lady stood up. She'd been in our services for, numbers, for months. I had no idea. She was in her 40s. When she was a teenager, she'd been hit by a bus. She'd broken her back and she'd had back issues all of her life. 
And she stepped forward and prayed for him. She got healed that night. I remember testifying the next week, just rejoicing. I'm going, I'm free from pain for the first time in 30 odd years. I just said, gosh, what, what if I'd not stepped out because I thought I might look silly? Now, maybe God would have used someone else. Maybe, I, I, I don't know, we can't know. But what I know is we need to be available. That person next to you at work tomorrow, you might sense something and you're not quite sure and I'll be bold. You never know what God might do. And if you offer it in love, if you offer it with respect, even if it doesn't resonate, you won't do great damage. Can we open up our hearts to the Lord? Holy Spirit, we thank you that you choose to use us. You choose to work in us and through us. Lord, that you're looking for us to be available. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us as brothers and sisters to be listening for your voice, to be attuned to what you want to do, to be bold in stepping out, that for the common good there might indeed be a manifestation of the Spirit's power. God, I pray that you would do something beautiful. Continue to work through us. Lord, continue to work in us. Lord, let us be a supernatural people. We pray that through our lives and through our witness, there would be a manifestation that God is alive and that He loves people, that He's coming after people. Use us for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name.